today because someone was persistent in doing the right thing. Shall we give him a round of applause? And there's a story I always like to tell about how persistence pays and it wears resistance. I went to school with this beautiful girl and she was so fine. And I, I looked at her and I decided this is going to be it. And I proposed to her and she gave me the loudest, most intimidating no you have ever heard in your life. She said no. But you see, <laughs> I had a picture of what I wanted my future to be like. And I saw a future with this girl. And she kept saying no. So guess what I did? Persistence wears resistance. So the resistance was heavy. And I would drive all the way. It was a distance of like going from Nairobi to Nakuru. I would drive all that way to pick her up on Sunday morning to take her to a church service that started at 7 a.m. in a church that was five minutes from her house. <laughs> How many of you remember the, the, the song, um, uh, Why Do Fools Fall in Love? And I say, if what you found is, is love, it will make a fool out of you. So I would drive every Sunday and she would not appreciate it. Maybe if you had written this book long ago, I would have understood how to shorten the process. <laughs> but I kept going. And I kept going. And the strategy was the same. That if I would just pick her up and take her to church for 7 o'clock service, she would be happy. She was not happy. So, a time came, I had to give up on that strategy and add something else to it. Now, I play the keyboard. So, I found out this girl really likes music. Um, now, I need to say this. Where I played the keyboard was as far away from church as uh, you can imagine. <laughs> and um, my mentor in music was a man called Fela Kuti. <laughs> and so, I had a big poster on my wall that wrote, um, it read, don't step on the grass, smoke it. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and so here I am with this church girl. You understand the dilemma. But persistence wears resistance. So I go with her and I decide, you know what? They needed a keyboardist in the church for the choir. Ladies and gentlemen, Wally joins the choir. <laughs> <laughs> so, I began to play in the choir and still she did not appreciate it. Now, I, now uh, uh, ladies, please forgive me in advance for what I'm about to say. Am I forgiven? Come on, come on, ladies. Am I forgiven? Thank you. No, 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 they already forgave me. They, they trust me. You see, I am this very, very bush African man who comes from a village where one road goes through the village and you can drive through my village in less than a minute. My village is so remote, planes don't fly over. And um, my father said we don't even exist on any official map of Nigeria. So we don't exist. <laughs> and so coming from that kind of a village, so I mean, nobody in my village can ever dream of becoming a pilot. He's never seen that before. So coming from that village... You don't appreciate the need to give a lady flowers. So I just could not understand why would I spend so much money to buy something that four days later you throw in the bin. Isn't it easier to just take it, take the money and put it in the bin? That was my mindset. But this girl loves flowers. <laughs> Persistence wears. Persistence. My goodness, Wally became a horticulturist. <laughs> <laughs> I knew the name of every flower in sight, man. <laughs> man, I was a flower, flower major. So, why am I saying this? 
Persistence wears resistance, but you know what I was most persistent in? I was most persistent in changing my strategy. I was most persistent in changing my strategy. Well, the good news. I came, I saw, and I conquered. And that girl, that girl has been my wife for 24 years. And I am happy to say, if I were to die and come back, I will marry her again. But this time you've written the book, so I will know how to do it better. And um, it's important for me to put this footnote. I think even God was very unhappy with the way she treated me. So I have three children today, and they all look like me. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you so much. My name has been mentioned, a lot of uh, has been said about me. I'm just humbled uh, this afternoon. Why did I choose to write? This started way back when I was at the University of Nairobi. Um, there's a book that is written but not yet published about uh, the power to read experience in high school and university. Um, but I chose to first um, publish this because I believe all of us want to succeed. How many want to succeed? Those who are not raising their hands, you want to fail miserably. All right? Yes, success. People have success. People want to go to the next level. Yeah, people want to move their business to catapult it to greater uh, returns, return on investment and the like. I, only, I always say that a loss is celebrated only in the context of losing weight. Yeah, we want to succeed. We want to go to the next level. So one day, I was heading to my home county, Kirinyaga. And with me was uh, Mr. Joshua Muremi. You have seen him in the acknowledgement page. And I hinted to him I wanted to write a book. I said, yes, do a book. I do a brief book. Don't do so many pages. And I love and value feedback. So I listened to him and decided to do a brief book that you can read better sitting. But also for those who insist that they cannot read, then we came up with a DVD that you can watch one hour with a live audience like you this afternoon. So the book, Why the Title of the X Matrix, this title, again, was recommended by another friend of mine, Agnes Karonji. Are you here? Agnes Karonji. We have worked with her in BBS, Mentorship Society. And why the X matrix? X is a success factor. Then why the seven P's of success? A lot has to do with these seven P's. One, I happen to be the seventh born in my family. Two, the book has seven chapters, which are the seven P's. Three, we are launching this book on 7th of August, which according to many Christians is the seventh day of the week. It has taken me seven good years since I started uh, being a public speaker. So you can see the coincidence of this seven, seven. And also again, we have seven partners with us today. So that's where the title and the subtitle came to be. We did like 200 copies before this publication to test the market and to get feedback. And somebody very important, and I appreciate this because Walimu ametutuwa mbali, sindiyo? Mbali sana, karibu na asubuhi. And with us, my teacher of English, not my English teacher, there's a difference. My teacher of English, not my English teacher, because if I say my English teacher, I mean he's a Briton and he's not. So my teacher of English is here, way back in Storeboy Center, Mr. Francis Kamoni. Give him a moment just to say something and how he gave me very important feedback of this book. MC Jasper, give a mic to Mr. Francis Kamoni, my teacher of English. Well, th <laughs> thank you, Jamlik. Uh, you told me to prepare an, an anecdote, eh? so let me go anecdotal. Uh, I remember Jamlik in class. He was the kind of student who already had a ready smile. When you got into class, he'll, he's there listening to you. And I could tell that, allow me to use this word, 
he was imbibing everything that we were saying because he was so very attentive. What I had never seen in him is this indefatigable spirit that has led him to being what he is today. A public figure, so I'll not call him motivational speaker now, a strategist, a researcher, author, TV personality, career person, I had not seen this. And when I saw it, it caught me by surprise. But I celebrate you like everybody else who is here. Um, you tell me, when I read the book, you want me to say, to say what I told you? Do I tell them what I told you? Just one comment. <laughs> I think I'll leave it at that because he went and uh, he went back to the drawing boards and it is a better text. I'll leave it at that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. A better hand for Mr. Francis Kamoni, my teacher of English. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, um, a lot of people, and I appreciate uh, Uchumi CEO who is here with us today. He's a personal friend of mine. I uh, used to pay him a courtesy call when he was Equity Bank COO. And I remember vividly, way back in 2013, after I had left KPMG, um, I, visit, I paid him a courtesy call in his office at Equity Center. And I remember him asking for my CV like almost six, ten times. But before I left the office, I told him I have uh, this kind of clip on YouTube. He looked at the clip and he like started changing his mind and asked me, Jamlik, why don't you follow your passion and purpose? Because he saw, yes, he had all the influence to just a click away, let's get Jamlik to a manager here and so on and so forth. But what he saw in the clip felt that would have been very misplaced that he encouraged me to be who I am. I thank you so much, Dr. Kim Ngetich, you have contributed to this. A better hand for Dr. Julius Kim Ngetich. So much has to do with purpose. A lot of us live borrowed lives. We live what the society have, you know, put out there for us. Lawyer, medical field, engineering, those are the ideal courses we talk of. But the big question is, why are you born to be a lawyer? Are you born to be an engineer? Some people are very unhappy in their careers. Because when you look at an individual, there are three perspectives to go about who they are. Number one is actually what I've just said. There is who you are. Number two, there is who you think you are. And number three, there is who other people think you are. What I encourage us to focus on this afternoon is who we are. And that is our purpose. But every day, you need to go through a journey. Because for those who are young, the ages of 20s up to early 30s are not ages of specialization, but of exploration. Discover what your purpose is. And I have done research and shared my personal experience on how you can discover your purpose. And then leave it. Be you, do you. That is chapter one. Chapter two, I focused on plan. Because it's almost a cliche that if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So when you discover what your purpose is, you need now to come up with a strategy to know how to focus all your energy to achieving your purpose, which is your goal in life, what you are born to do, what you are created to do. And I encourage young people to be ambitious. So I challenge people and encourage people to have ambitious plans. Huge plans. Silent Johnson Salive said if your dreams are not big enough, if your dreams do not scare you, they are not big enough. So have ambitious plans. And Kenya we are known, we have the culture, the DNA of excellence. Think of Barack Obama, the 44th president of the United States of America. He's our very own, isn't it? Rudupita Wadiongo, Lupita Nyongo, if you like. She has conquered Oscar. Yeah. We have the efficacy. We have the capacity to excel. But that will only happen if you know your purpose. Then you plan and strategize how to achieve the same. Again, encourage people to have written 
plans because when you write your plans you are able to follow them to the letter so let's have ambitious plans that scare us to dream think big go to the next level i had all the reasons to quit ladies and gentlemen i had all the reasons to give up actually i've just given a tip of the iceberg in that book about my story the book that i'm currently writing my second book entitled the making of a brand i'll come bear and tell you what my story is from the stammering that has been mentioned here to a time when i spent like one year uh, between kandongo primary and uh, madiga primary i almost did not finish my education i almost became a conductor you don't know this yeah but uh, persistence wears down resistance chapter 3 after you know your purpose then you plan how to achieve it then the next thing to do i really avoided one thing using the word doing eh because for those who could be aware doing is a very strong word especially around the time of valentines eh yeah because I really avoided using that word here, doing, so I talked of pursue. That is the third chapter. Because after you have known what your purpose is, you now need to execute that purpose. And it all comes to what is the starting point? Where do you start? You have your purpose, you know how to plan to go about it, but the starting point is very critical. How do you start? Take the first step. A practical example. About three months ago, three, four, five months ago, uh, when the publisher handed me uh, the finished work, I started foreseeing a very big lounge attended by the who is who, everybody, family and friends. Because for you to achieve something, you must first of all see it. You must see it in your mind. I foresaw a mega lounge. But I wondered, how shall we go about it? I have a team of about 12 people who advise me, Team Kogi. And we sat together and started brainstorming how to go about this. But there was always the starting point. So we said we need to rope in partners. And uh, Matthew 7.7 7 says, ask and... Ask and... Yes, ask you shall... Uh, uh, be given a seek you'll find knock and the door shall be opened unto you and safaricom came on board and we said we'll not stop at that legibra old mutual akamai simba telecom have also come on board so there was that starting point that in your life you need to just take the first step and pursue your dreams doesn't matter the challenges because first of all don't think about the how see the vision first 100 percent intention plus zero percent no know how is equals to 100 percent success so first of all know uh, have the intention to succeed then even if you don't know how it is going to come to happen when you take the first step the next chapter is persistence basically what i've just mentioned the journey of not giving up when you are pursuing the right thing the challenge we have in light of persistence we need things to happen here and now if it's walking we want to walk fast if it is eating you want to eat fast foods if it is drinking you want to take instant coffee if it's overtaking you want to overtake on the first lane when it comes to movie you want to watch the first and furious movie what happened to patience as much as we should be persistent let's exercise patience Rome wasn't built in a day it has been seven years for me to, to be humbled and start in front of you. I'm not asking you to take seven years. Your case could be three months, could be two weeks, but you need to exercise that patience as much as we need to be persistent and achieve our goal and purpose. You may have to change the formula because if something is not working out, you need to know what is the plan B. It's only two kinds of people who do not change. Dead men cannot, fools don't. So you need to change, pursue your purpose, try another formula, and you'll be on your way 